Good evening. Welcome to The Breakdown with Pastor Lee. I'm so glad that you could join us today. Today's topic is simply called church. Uh, there's so many different aspects about church. Different people have different ideas about what they consider church to be. We're going to break down some of those ideas today. And we're going to break them down with, first of all, using the scripture. We have a special guest today as well. And I don't know if I can call her a special guest because she's going to be uh, reoccurring quite a few times as we do these shows. She is Apostle Catherine Thomas, and she will be coming out to share some light on the situation as well as we talk about church. That's just the title of the show today. We're going to start off in an area that most people would think to go to when you talk about church. We're going to start off at Genesis 28. That's chapter 28, verse 10 through 23. And we're going to start there. And we pick up at, with Jacob. Jacob is just really, what we pick up in, in, in this uh, scripture, Jacob is on the run. Everybody knows the story about Jacob. He, Jacob, he stole his brother Esau's birthright, took his blessing, and he's on the run right now. And so that's just a little background of what we're going to pick up at. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west and to the east to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and you will watch and, and, and you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tent. Now, now at first glance, if you don't really pay attention, uh, you, could, you could actually lose fact of the fact that Jacob is talking about church. Let's go back. In the scripture, we're going to break this down as much as we can, because this is the first really mention of an of a organized church. We go back to verse 16. It says, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. That's the first thing we want to talk about. Church is a connection. Number one, we're going to go through a few points about church. But first of all, church the first thing you need to understand is a connection. And here Jacob realizes that he's in the presence of God. And when he realizes that, that's when he says, I was not aware of it. Now, God's presence had already been there before Jacob even came. Church is the being aware of being in the presence of God. You have, if you go to church, and you sit there the whole day and you have a good time with the choir and you have a good time with 
with, with worship and everything else, but you don't experience the presence of God, then you never went. You didn't go to church. It's not that God is not there. It's you being able to experience the presence of God. That's what's important. You have to make sure that your spirit is in the right place to be able to do that. Because you can be in the most boring church and God is still there. We notice also in this, in, 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 in verse 17, he says, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. The house of God. Jacob is laying in a vacant field. There's nothing there. This is, in fact, this was a place where people used to go and rest before they kept on moving to the next place. So it was more like a camping ground. But Jacob called it the house of God. The house of God is where you experience God at. The house of God can be in your car. The house of God can be in your own house. The house of God is wherever you experience the Lord's presence. There's a connection. Number two, church is a conversation. We notice that Jacob and the Lord were speaking. The Lord spoke to Jacob. He spoke back. They had a conversation, just like when you're in church. When you're in church and you're not able to hear from the, from, from the Lord and able to have a conversation with him, you're not in church. It's important that we assemble in a place together to have church. That's church, but this is church too. So what we're saying is not either or. Church is more than just a building, but not exclusively just a situation where you meet God. It's all of that. So what you should be trying to make sure is that the church is in your heart, because that's really what Jacob is talking about. He's saying that I experienced the presence of God here. This must be the house of God. And, and he also goes on to say, this is the gate of heaven. In his dream, he talked about the angels going up and down the ladder, up and down, ascending up and coming down, bringing blessings up, bringing blessings down, going up, coming back down to earth. That's a connection there. That connection is with earth and with heaven. There's a in between, there's a ladder in between to get from each one of them, and that's Jesus. You going, the angels are going up and down. He's in church. He's established church right where he was. Number three, church is a commitment. Once he made the understanding that he was in the house of the Lord, he said that. Once he made that connection that he was there, his heart was moving toward making a commitment. So what did he say at the end? Without anybody having to tell him, without anybody having to, to, to show him what to do, he simply said at the end of verse 21, no, that's 22, I mean, he simply said, and all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. He made that decision because his heart was moving towards making a commitment. When you are committed, <laughs> this might sound funny, but when you make a commitment, whenever you make a commitment, your wallet is going to follow. Your wallet is going to follow right behind that commitment. And that's just, you know, that's just the way, that's just the way it is. And so without anybody having to tell him, his heart was moved because he had experienced God. He had an experience with God. He had a conversation with God. He had a connection with God. And now he has a commitment that he makes. Not with the church. You should make a commitment with church. If you go and join the church, it's good to make a commitment if that's the church that you want to be, be in and be there. No, his commitment was made with God. And he was led that way because of the movement in his heart. So, what we want to understand is church is in here, church can be out there, church can be in the building, but the main thing is to understand that church is where God's presence is. And so, I'm going to bring on our special guest today, and her name is Apostle Catherine Thomas, and she's going to shed some light 
on church as well. So we covered a few different angles. I'm going to bring her out right now, Apostle Catherine Thomas. Well, we welcome you to the show, Apostle Thomas. We're so glad to have you. Uh, as you know, we've been talking about church. We've been talking about different aspects of church, what church is, what church is not. And I wanted to have you on as our first guest in the breakdown because I know for a fact that you've been a pastor of a church for quite some time. And uh, you'll be able to bring some points out about what's going on with church right now. Church is different now than what it used to be. And you being a pastor as long as you, as, as long as you have been, I'm sure you have some, some different uh, insight that you would like to share with us with your experience of the new uh, church as it is now, as we should say. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you for having me on the program as a guest. Yes. And, um, yes, I do have some insight. You know, I've been pastoring for 15 years now. I'm senior pastor of Worshippers Interceding for Excellence Church. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I've noticed is that when the pet during the pandemic, mm -hmm. I have not been able to bring the sheep, keep the sheep together in in the church, mm -hmm. on the inside of the church. Right. So I'm glad we're talking about church today because we have been able to come out of the building mm -hmm. and now we're on uh, ministry, Zoom ministry. Right. And as a shepherd, you know, you, you just want to see the sheep together. Right. But, you know, at this time, we're going with the flow because God has allowed this. Right. And I really believe that, I don't believe that God caused it. Right. I do believe that this came as a result of Satan. Right. But I believe that God is allowing it and he's using it in a, a lot of instances for our good. Yes. Because we're finding out new ways to have church, That's as right. you mentioned earlier. That's right. And it's not about being in the building. That's right. And so that's one of the things that, you know, I've had to really uh, face reality, no yes. matter how much I want us to be in the building, right. it's not God's will at this time for right. us to be in the building. However, he has opened up a door mm -hmm. for us to have ministry. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's excellent. That's an excellent point. And uh, to be able to find new and creative ways to minister. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a real challenge for a lot of people. You preached a message, uh, one of the last messages that you had preached before we went on Zoom. Mm -hmm. You preached a message, uh, stay on the wall. Right. And uh, it, it really hit me. And it, to be quite honest with you, it was that message that moved me mm -hmm. to really want to do this show. Right. Because in that message you were saying, what you were saying was, regardless of what happens, what situation Stay on the wall, continue God's work. Yes. Regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what people say, regardless of who tries to take you off of that, find another way to do it. Yes. Find a right. creative way, because if you really have a heart to do God's work, he'll find another avenue for you to do it. Yes, he will. That's one thing that I do know. And it may, people get so caught in the traditional way of doing things, but God does new things all the time. Yes, he does. And you manage to be able to say, okay, after so many, was it 15 years? 15 years. After 15 years of doing church that way, you managed to be able to say, okay, I'm hearing God moving me to do a ministry a different way. Yes. And with the Zoom uh, a ministry that you that I have had the pleasure of being a part of, being because I'm a part of the church, mm -hmm. uh, we, it's been very effective. Yes. I had an opportunity to have church with my grandmother in Chicago. Right. Who would have thought that? Right. You know, and that's, <laughs> so I mean... It's ways, and if you really think outside the box, it's pluses to this type of way. It's just a matter of you hearing God and what he's leading you to do. Right, right. Because it's, as you said earlier, it's about being in the presence of God. Right. And, of course, God's presence can be on Zoom, Internet, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube, That's right. Facebook, you know. Mm -hmm. God's presence can be anywhere. That's First right. of all, his presence has to be in you. That's right. Okay, when you have the presence, wherever you go, mm -hmm. you're bringing him there. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. And it was just like uh, when I was uh, talking about the, the scripture earlier uh, with Jacob, how he decided that where he was, that's where church was. Yes. And it's because he recognized that God was there. And 
that was just, that was a profound uh, scripture because when I first really started studying it, uh, it jumped out at me as, as being part of church. And we just have to be, be able to keep our minds open for what God is doing. He's always doing something new. He's always guiding us. The thing is to be able to hear his voice. What does he have for you to do now? What is it that, that he wants you to do? Because it, you can minister in any kind of way. That's right. That's right. And I like how that was a very good uh, uh, story and the scripture that you used earlier about Jacob because, you know, a lot of times we just consider church beginning in the New Testament. Right. But God gave you the revelation mm -hmm. of church beginning in the Old Testament with Jacob. Yes. You know, and so I, I want to congratulate you also on your new program you. because um, the title is The Breakdown with Pastor Lee. And I know for a fact that God uses you often and gives you uh, revelation knowledge on how to break down the word. And so I'm excited about being here. And I'm sure that everyone that watches this um video is going to be blessed. I am excited about it. I'm excited about having you as the first guest. I wouldn't have had it any other way. And uh, especially for the topic that we, we have today when we're talking about church, it was just fitting to have someone who's been there, who's done that, and, and experienced that. Because there's people out there that are saying, hey, you know, the doors of the church are not open. What, what can I do now? What right. should I do now? Where right. do I go now? Right. And, and it's just time to have that conversation. I hope that they're listening so that so they can be able to understand that church is that plus other things as well. But we have to make sure that we got we have God in here first. Amen. Because it's not gonna do you any good if you don't have him in here. Right. And if we have God in our heart, then we will still want to witness to others. That's right. You know, we can't use this uh, pandemic as an excuse. That's that's because, that's exactly um, right. The other day I was on the telephone mm -hmm. and I it was actually someone had called me. It was a business call, mm -hmm. and uh, never heard of her or never met her before. Mm -hmm. But it was a young lady on the phone, and she began to talk about how happy she was mm -hmm. that her son was able to be um, on virtual uh, to learn uh, in a virtual way because he has uh, cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And so she wasn't sure that he was going to be able to comprehend right. because he has always been, you know, physically in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But she was excited because it was his first time mm -hmm. and he was able to comprehend. Mm -hmm. And so she shared that with me. Right. But the thing that I heard was cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, I said, what is your son's name? And she told me her son's name. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to pray for him. Yes. I said, I'm going to believe God for a miracle. I said, can you believe with me so we can believe God for a miracle for your son? And she got so excited yes. in her. You could hear it in her voice. I mean, she just went to another whole level. Mm -hmm. And so that was a form of witnessing. That was a form of letting God use me yes. on the telephone. Yes. Yes. And so God wants to still use us. And that's why in that message I said we have to stay on the wall yes. because right. we cannot sit back. It's not a time for Christians to sit back. That's absolutely it's a time uh, for Christians to be salt yes. and light. That's right. This is our opportunity. Yes, that's, that's perfect. You, you, hit, you just touched on the point where you're saying it's not a time for Christians to sit, to sit back. I know some Christians who view this as time off, right? break time. You know, you talk to them, like, well, my church is not, not open right now, right. so I can't, you know, there's nothing I can do. I'm kind of, mope. no, it's not break time. It's not no, time it's out, not. you know, it's, it's, not no, it's not any of those things. It's time for you to get in a quiet place and listen to where God is directing you now. Right. What does he want you to do now? If the brook dries up, over here, right. doesn't mean that he doesn't want you to go over here. All right. Now. So that's 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 what time it is. Like you just said, it's not a time out. Yes, I think I actually think God wants us to see that He wants to use us outside the four walls. Yes. And and then know, He can use us outside. And the four that He walls. can use. A lot of people don't really realize that they get so conditioned with going inside the building and not realize God can use you outside the four walls. He can use us. But there were so many people that wouldn't come out. That's right. That's right. You know, it was like God has been. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, now, you know, they're telling us to wear the mask mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. And, 
You know, a lot of people just won't wear the mask. That's right. It's the same way spiritually same God's spirit. been telling us, you know, it, it's in his word. Yes. You know, that we are to witness. But at the same time, there are only a handful of Christians in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, it's just, I would say, a handful in the mm -hmm. entire kingdom. Right. That will really come out. That's right. And and really go up to people, or really just talk to people about God. That's right. It's just like we we so we're in a place where we're concerned about how we're going to look, mm. and we're more concerned right. about ourselves than we are about um, leading people to Christ. That's right. And people are more and more people are on their, their way to hell mm -hmm. because no one has even shared Christ with them. That's powerful. And so I think during this pandemic, God is saying, well, you wouldn't come out. Right. You wouldn't come to church anyway. So I've shut, I've allowed the church to be right. shut down. Right. And right. now you're going to have to be out. That's right. And it's just like the scripture said, all things work together for good. Amen. Romans 8, 28. And in this particular situation, just like you said, and I think it's an important point that you bring up where you say that, God allowed this situation to happen. Yeah. Because you hear people who don't know any better saying God caused the situation like this. That's an important point. I'm glad we touched on it. Because he didn't cause it. What God does and has done throughout the Bible and has done throughout time is he allows the situation, reaches into that situation, and gets the glory out of it. Yes. He's been doing that from the beginning of, I mean, from the beginning of time. You go through the Bible, it's always been done that way. This situation is no different. It happened. He allowed it to happen. But he will get the glory out of it. And like you said, the <coughs> point you just uh, brought up is that they wouldn't uh, come out. You wouldn't come out of the, the four wall. People got so conditioned and so comfortable inside of their little four wall church yes, yes. where they didn't want to bring the word out. Right. You used the phrase before that, like you said, us four, no more. Right. They were satisfied with just the people that were inside the church doing what they were doing. They wouldn't come out and spread the word. So right. now, okay, I allow the doors to be closed. It's not break time. It's time to share the words with those who may not other, otherwise come inside the church. Right. You take church to them. Right, right. Oh, oh, well, Pastor, we're supposed to be social distancing. Well, how do you take church to somebody? And we're supposed to be social distancing. Now, you saying that out there. Now, what you do is you find other ways to be able to reach people. Right. First of all, you pick up the phone and call somebody. Yes. You know, that's one good way. You don't have to be a minister to do that. And many of us have uh, uh -huh. family members that's who right. need Christ. So that's this right. is a time where you can go to your family members. That's right. You know, take time. Exactly. You, you've got time to do that. Now, now this has been a very interesting conversation. Yes. I'm so glad to have had you here today to shed light on the topic of church, the different aspects of it, what it is, what it's not. And I really think that um, I think that the Lord really used this program today uh -huh. to get those those things out there. People yeah. really wanted to have some answers and to, to have some direction. And to know that you, you can have church even if your church doors are closed. That's right. And you're doing that right now. As a matter of fact, um, you're doing that, and, and you're doing that through Zoom. And can you give us some information about that? Yes, we're uh, having a service on, through Zoom ministry every Sunday at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And um, for the viewers, you can go to worshipersinterceding.com. That's excellent. And um, I, I know for a fact that it's a powerful Sir, because I'm a part of it. And for those of you who don't know, I don't mind telling you, this is my mother also. So, you know, and I just thank you for being a guest on the show today. And while we have you here, Apostle, uh, would you just say a prayer for everyone today and just invite everyone? As I'm sure it may be someone that's watching that, that they want to give their life to, to the Lord and, and you, can, you, can, uh, you can say a prayer for them. Okay, well, thank you. Once again, I thank you for the honor of being here. And I also thank those that are watching. And I would like to say that for those of you who are watching, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you just go ahead and do that right now and ask Jesus to come into your heart and just repent of any sin that is in your life. Ask God to forgive you and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior mm -hmm. and your Lord. God bless you. I want to thank you all for tuning in to The Breakdown with Pastor Lee. And tune in next time. And before then, be safe and may God bless you.